Good morning. We shall begin our first series of our VChat this morning, December 5, 2021. It's a good December morning to everyone out there. Again, I welcome all of you to this intimate affair with yours truly, Dr. A. So I am actually here to welcome the first timers, those who have come and joined us for the first time. I am here to heighten self-awareness with the different series of talks, um, dialogues, lectures that will involve or heighten awareness of the personal and intimate issues that each one of you as a woman experience as you go through your life cycle. I would also want to thank those who have come for the first, for the second, third, and the fourth time to attend my webinars as you fully support this advocacy of mine to heighten and to promote wellness amongst all of us. So December is not going to be my last talk as this will be actually the first time I will launch my series on VChat. Let me explain why I call it VChat. I wanna do away with the word vagina dialogues because I feel that this should be an intimate and a personal affair for all of us. So I would like to ask each one of you, how well do you know your Vs? The Vs actually are the least discussed and talked about openly amongst women, amongst your friends, amongst your gym buddies, your Zumba buddies, your coworkers, or anyone. You'd like, you can't just talk about your Vs to anyone because it's intimate and it's personal. And not only that, it is important for me to emphasize that the Vs are the expression of our feminine sexuality as it ensures our fullness, fulfillment, and happiness as a woman. So, what are the Vs? Remember that the Vs that you have in your body is the most vulnerable as it ages because it does not hide the truth. So I won't be surprised if many of you are confused with the Vs in your body. We actually have two Vs and maybe a little anatomy this morning will help you understand what these are. The first is the vulva. It is collectively known as the female external genitalia or the female sexual organ. And this differentiates us from the men. This is the vulva. You have a mound of fat right in front when lying or standing position, and this is called the mons pubis. Prominently in the vulva, you will, ex you will see visibly the labia majora or what they call the outer lips. It is full of hair and it can partially hide or cover some structures beneath, and one of these is the inner lips, or what we call the labia minora. The labia minora is hairless, and there are actually two inner folds. And if you are to move upwards, you will see in the midline a prominent structure, which I will discuss in a few seconds. And this is known as your clitoris. Your clitoris okay, 
is found in front of the vulva and is partially hidden by the clitoral hood or what we call a cape of tissue. Your clitoris is rich in nerve tissue and is suited for um, sexual stimulation. While the vulva is symmetrical, it is important to include and highlight the midline structures, which are the clitoris. You have further down a urinary opening, which plays a role in urination where urine is excreted from the urinary bladder out into the urinary opening. Another tissue or another structure, as you will see here, is an opening. Generally, many of you are confused and call this whole structure the vagina, but that is incorrect, okay? Because the vulva is a flat structure, it is not the vagina. The vagina is actually an internal structure. The vagina is a canal, it's a muscular canal that is found internally, okay? Here you have a schematic drawing of a woman lying down. This is her mons pubis. This is actually the vag vaginal canal that's found internally. And it's connected outside externally by the vaginal opening. So here you have your reproductive organs found internally. You have your uterus, you have your ovary, you have the cervix, and you have the vagina. Suffice to say here, again, for a better anatomic understanding, you have your internal reproductive organs. Here you have your reproductive organs superimposed on your vulva. So you have your vulva, your labia majora, labia minora, midline structures, symmetrically you will find, symmetrical, symmetrically you will find the clitoris, urethral opening, your vaginal opening, that opens into your vaginal canal, then that opens again to your internal reproductive organs, the cervix, the uterus, and the ovaries. Now, let me emphasize, all of these structures have their own roles and function. The vagina plays important roles in, number one, sexual behavior. Without the vagina, the vaginal canal, you can't have sex. So there is a deficiency or no sexual behavior ever exists. Two, your vaginal canal also functions acts as a outflow tra tract because menstrual flow will actually ensue with menstruation, with blood flowing out from the uterus into the cervix, into the vagina. And third, your vaginal canal, your vagina, okay, plays an important role in childbirth. So it is important to emphasize at this point that these structures are important, that your Vs are the vulva and the vagina. The, vagi the vulva is a flat structure, while the vagina is a muscular canal. I would like to further point out another midline structure. Okay, let me emphasize, the vulva is symmetrical, if you cut through the midline, you have an, a mirror image of one side, the right and the left. Your midline structure that supports your vaginal canal that is important in childbirth and in sexual behavior is your perineum. 
Okay. It also consists of muscles and maintains, preferable, uh, maintains importantly a barrier that protects any infection that will be um, that can come from the lower or external factors into the vaginal opening. So the perineum is important for two functions, a barrier protection and support for your vaginal canal. While it is, while I hope that you remember these, I would like to make a metaphor or for you to better understand why the vulva is important. You know, we as women, we are endowed with two faces. God has given us two beautiful faces. One, a face that you'd like to show off for everyone to see, that beautiful face. And another face that is found hidden below is not for everyone to see. Now, as we age, inevitably, our body goes through a breakdown, biological breakdown, as we age. And women would like to defy these changes by even promoting um, beauty products that will defy our age, correct? But we forget that our face below also ages. And unfortunately, it lags behind and the truth cannot be hidden. So that is our third V. You have your vulva, you have your vagina. The third V is that the vulva, the vagina are vulnerable. The most vulnerable part of our body that is affected when aging sets in. So to better understand, okay, what happens when we age, what happens in, um, in the vulva, in the vagina? So let me explain this further for you to understand. So this is your face. Okay, this is your vulva, okay. your cheeks are likened to the outer lips, to your labia majora. The crease between the bridge below the bridge of the nose and your cheeks are what we find, find actually are the inner lips. So this is your labia majora, the cheeks, the crease of your, the bridge of the nose, but the bridge of the nose below, and oh. your cheeks would be your labia minora. Take note, your inner lips do not go beyond your labia majora. That is what is normal. We don't see flaps in our faces going beyond our cheeks. Now, we also have, like the vulva, our face is symmetrical. We have midline structures. So the bridge of the nose, okay? The bridge of the nose would be your clitoris. Further down, you will have the tip of the nose would be the opening of your urethra. And then further down, you will have your vaginal opening or the mouth. Now, what is the structure that is comparable to your perineum? That would be your chin. So anything that sags in your face as you age will certainly be prominently seen, but hidden in below, in your face below. So remember that, two faces of a woman, all right? And interestingly, 
there are different appearances and sizes of the vulvar parts and may vary greatly from one woman to another as one moves into the different phases of her life. But understanding that the basic structure and function are the same. So let's see, how does a normal youthful vulva look like? So that's your vulva. This is your normal youthful vulva. It's virginal, it's clean, concise. As you will notice, there's still no hair. This is your labia majora. This is your labia minora. It's a thin inner fold of structure. You have where you will meet, the ends of your labia minora meet in the clitoris. There's hardly any excess of your clitoral hood. Midline structures, you will find the urethral opening and then you will find the vaginal opening. So as one grows and as one ages, how does a childbearing vulva look like? So the, this, these pictures will show you the different appearances and sizes. So you have here a childbearing vulva. So what do you notice? You have excess labia minora, excess labial skin that protrudes beyond your labia majora and down into your perineum. Next, here is a clear picture of another childbearing vulva, different appearance, but they have the same structure, same function, but there are different changes. So you have your labia majora, labia minora, you have your perineum, your vulvar opening. Here, you will have, this is a picture of a, um, a young adult with her congenital labial hypertrophy, where the excess skin of the labia minora protrudes beyond your labia majora. Here you have a childbearing vulva that, is, that results from traumatic changes from childbirth and aging. Again, you have a sagging labia minora and you have excess skin protruding or folding on the sides of your clitoris. And then here is another picture of excess labial um, hypertrophy and labial and clitoral hood. What happens? You're probably curious. Um, I don't know the age group that is actually out there, but here you will have a sample of a, an aging vulva. It's flat, dry, while the structures may still be visible. We are not sure about its function, but this is how you cannot hide the truth as you age. You, this is an example of a 65-year-old vulva and a woman who comes in with a very beautiful face because she has defied her age at 65, but not realizing this is how her 65-year-old vulva appears. Another, here you will see how the changes of aging affects the vulvar structures where there is dryness, itchiness, and chronic um, changes that appear on the vulva. So, 
The series today will just talk about how do you keep your vulva and your vagina healthy. Okay. We will talk about restoration of this childbearing vulvas and vagina and aging vulva in another, another talk. So to understand it clearly, let us talk more and focus on the vagina. So this is your vagina. It functions three, it has three functions, sexual behavior. It's an outflow track for your menstruation and discharges and for childbirth purposes. We must understand the vagina has life and activity. The same way your uterus, your ovary, your cervix, do they also function. They are given special responsibilities. Your vagina has its own mind. It has, it's a self-cleaning machine. It has its own ecosystem. And therefore you must understand it's a self-cleaning machine. A healthy vagina has a normal vaginal pH of 3.8 to 4.2, and it should be acidic. pH refers to a um, solution that is either alkaline or acidic. The vaginal pH is acidic at 3.8 to 4.2. Anything above five, that would be alkaline. Anything below five would be acidic. So a healthy vagina is dependent on an acidic pH, which is 3.8 to 4.2. Apart from that, it is important to understand that our vagina is actually rich in quantities of naturally occurring good bacteria known as lactobacilli, which prevents the invasion of the vaginal walls by bad bacteria. And your lactobacilli is responsible for producing lactic acid, which provides a natural barrier against infection and irritation, and therefore the lactic acid maintains this acidic environment. It must be emphasized, this is an important slide for everyone out there to understand, okay? It is important to emphasize that as we go through our life cycle, our vaginal, vaginal pH also changes. Okay. Let me emphasize that the newborn, their vaginal pH is four to five. So slightly acidic, slightly alkaline. A young girl, a seven-year-old young girl, the vaginal pH is that of seven. Take note, seven. As the young girl moves into puberty, puberty is menarche. It is when the, the young lady starts menstruating, a pubertal child or a pubertal lady or girl, pH is five to seven because now she's beginning to menstruate. But what happens as the lady continues to grow, okay, and continues to menstruate? So you put them into a childbearing phase, the childbearing phase or reproductive phase or pregnancy phase. Your pH value now moves lower down to an acidic level, that of 4 to 5 or 3.5 to 4.5.
Now, as you age and go through perimenopause and menopause, the vaginal pH now reverts back to a higher level, which is more alkaline, and that being six to seven. So what do you notice in this slide? The young lady, the um, non-pubertal, and the menopausal woman, they have similar vaginal pH. And what is it that is common to both of them, to both of these phases? Okay, I will get into that. So what do you notice? What do you understand with this? That to maintain a healthy vagina, you not only have an acidic pH of 3.8 to 4.2, you not only have lactobacilli that is naturally occurring in the vagina, but you also have an important hormone that is important for vaginal health. And that is our female hormone, estrogen. It plays an important role in vaginal health and vaginal pH as it maintains this pH because estrogen that is lined in your vag vagina releases, it becomes a food substrate. It releases glycogen that becomes a food substrate for lactobacilli. Okay. We're doing a little biochemistry here and not only anatomy, but this is going to be simple for you to understand. On the left-hand side of your screen, you will see the vagina. It has rugae. This is a muscular canal. Okay, so this is your vaginal canal. It opens into your vaginal opening externally. Internally, it provides a conduit into your reproductive organs, where you will find the neck of the uterus, the cervix. Now, I mentioned that the vagina has its own ecosystem. It's alive, it has an activity. So all the estrogen, all the vaginal cells are moistened by estrogen, okay? Now, by a biochemical, pathway, your estrogen becomes a food substrate releasing glycogen. And glycogen is the food that lactobacilli feeds on. And because of this exchange, lactic acid is produced. And it is the lactic acid that maintains and produces your pH of 3.8 to 4.2, promoting growth further of your lactobacilli and therefore inhibiting any pathogenic organism that comes from outside externally into the vaginal canal. So the more lactobacilli present in your vagina and the more estrogen that is lining your vaginal canal, you maintain a pH of 3.8 to 4.2. And therefore, any disruption in this vaginal ecosystem may result in vaginal infection, vaginal dryness, and overall inflammation. So as I speak, I know many of you are in the reproductive period, and this is exactly what is happening. Many of you have gone past pubertal stage. Some of you are in the childbearing period, and a number of you may be in the perimenopausal phase. So what is exactly happening 
in your vagina right now. You have estrogen. It is stimulating your vaginal canal to have this um, relationship between your lactobacilli and the food substrate glycogen that is being produced during this time. And therefore your lactobacilli is actually um, happy because it is able to maintain the pH balance of 3.5 to 5. Why five? Because you're, some of you are going into the perimenopausal phase. There are changes in your estrogen um, um, supply, supply in the vagina, okay? So what is happening inside? Here, to have a better understanding. In the reproductive period, you have, again, I will repeat, estrogen, stimulates your glycogen content. Your glycogen becomes the food substrate of your lactobacilli. And so inside the vagina, you will see happy faces, happy yellow lactobacilli, vaginalis, bacteria, good bacteria present in your vagina, maintaining it at 3.8 to 4.2. And the bad bacteria, the blue bad bacteria, are, if you will notice, kept at its minimum. But what happens at both ends of a woman's life spectrum? Remember that slide? What happens in the young and the elderly, particularly those with deficient estrogen supply? So we have the pre-reproductive period, where we expect no menstruation. Therefore, there is a decrease it's infancy to childhood. There's low estrogen levels or absence of estrogen prior to menarche, meaning to say prior to puberty, before the young child starts to menstruate. And what happens also to the post-reproductive period? where you are menopausic, postmenopausic, and geriatric, where your pH now is more than five because of the declining or absence of estrogen levels. How does your vagina actually look? So for the pre and post reproductive period, you have a decrease in your estrogen, Therefore, a decrease in your glycogen. There is a lack of food supply for your lactic, uh, for your lactobacilli to feed on. So there is less of this lactobacilli vaginalis inside your vagina. So you see, there are less yellow, happy faces inside your vagina. But what happens? There is now, there seems to be more of the other bacteria present because the pH of your vagina now has increased to an alkaline level of five to seven. So uh, do you still follow me? I hope you're still, um, you're not getting lost in trying to absorb all of these. So how does one actually keep the vagina healthy. We have to run through a healthful female hygiene for us to achieve overall wellness. Number one, intimate washing. For those of my patients who are out there, I always emphasize intimate washing. And for all of you to understand, it is important to maintain and to ensure the practice of downward washing motion from the vagina to the butt, to the anus. Again, you have your vulvar structures, your labia majora, your labia minora, your midline structures. Again, intimate wash washing from up to down. 
after urination or defecation. You are always to clean from the front of your private parts backwards towards the anus. Because if you wipe upwards from the butt into the vagina, you are pulling potential germs and bad bacteria from the external environment into the vagina, into the urethra, causing an infection. So that being said, what else are the causes of vaginal pH imbalance? Hormonal changes, I've explained that, okay? The lack of estrogen decreases, the, the lack of estrogen decreases all this biochemical reaction in the vagina and therefore changes your vaginal pH. The use of certain antibiotics. Commonly, women who take antibiotics because of vaginal infections may be prone to changes again in the vaginal pH because it may decrease the acidity and therefore may cause some infection, okay? So the use of certain antibiotics can result in this. Overuse napkins or tampons, good gosh. You keep doing this, you, men, you try to keep your over, or overuse napkins or even the use of um, daily panty liners or tampons, menstrual cups or diaphragms or anything that you wanna put in your vagina, it will totally change the vaginal pH. Intrauterine devices or other contraceptive devices, as I've mentioned, diaphragm or even the menstrual cup can also change the pH. Menstrual period, remember blood in itself can be a needles of vaginal infection. It's alkaline, it's not acidic. And when it passes through the vaginal canal, it can also um, irritate and affect the pH present in your vagina. High sucrose and lactose, the diabetic women are prone to changes in vaginal pH. Introduction of semen. Suffice to understand that the seminal fluid is alkaline. And so after sexual intercourse, with the, semin with the seminal, um, seminal fluid ejaculated inside the vagina, this can cause also changes because seminal fluid is alkaline. So it will disrupt the acidic environment. Douching is another factor that can cause vaginal pH. Douching with inappropriate feminine washes will also result in a disruption in the vaginal ecosystem. So what happens when you have an imbalance in your vaginal pH? You will present with discharges, inflammation, irritation of your vulva. It may present with vaginal odor, itchiness, and even vaginal dryness. While this picture shows a balance of your good and bad bacteria, when there is a disruption in your vaginal pH, there is going to be a predominance of your bad bacteria. What else can cause vaginal itching? As I did mention, your panty liners. I will overemphasize panty liners are to be used on free days and not on ever, any other days. As, as if you use this as a daily wear, you actually increase the marked dryness of the vagina. Prolonged use can cause discoloration of the skin. Prolonged use can cause inflammation, may lead to chronic irritation and recurrent infection. 
women do not realize that panty liners will keep the vulva vaginal area very moist. And this moist, moist environment is not conducive for um, a healthy vagina because it can actually cause a spread of discharges or bacteria from the butt into the vagina. Furthermore, the environment will be less acidic. And so for those women out there who have no choice, but who are perennially wearing stockings, pants, liners, you have to keep that intimate area ventilated. It has to be aerated, has to be kept dry. So my suggestion is, instead of, um, I'm sure many of you will question, but doctora, I have a lot of discharge and it stains my underwear. You know what? If you have a discharge, go to your doctor. The, vad the panty liners is not a solution. Go to your doctor to understand why you have a discharge. Um, throw off those panty liners and instead, Change your underwears as often as necessary, rather than using panty liners. And important to that, I always tell my patients, even at home, you don't have to keep wearing tight jeans, tight shorts. You don't have to wear undies. You have to keep it aerated because almost 18 hours out of 24 hours, you're always out or you're in the office. You're always wearing undies. You're always in the office, cross legs, et cetera. You have to keep it well ventilated. Furthermore, do not use perfumes or deodorants on your genitals. Miss Kina Chanel ang gamitin yung perfume. Hindi yan babango. It will even cause irritation. Okay? What else? What happens? Remember what I said. If you have a discharge, seek and go to your OBGYN. Consult. Seek help. What are the unusual signs or changes that you will notice? The discharges may not always be the same. It may be clear white or other times it may be egg white, which may probably mean that you are ovulating. It may be slippery, it may be clear, it may be mucoid, it can be thick and uh, viscous. And sometimes the vaginal fluid may also change when you are sexually aroused. So what are the causes of vaginal infection and irritation that may present as vaginal discharges? It may be caused by bacteria, fungus, or again, hormonal changes, or could be caused by a true allergic reaction. Now, what are the infections that may be due to a change in this vaginal pH? Okay, here is a very clear understanding again of vaginal pH imbalance. You have a normal range of 3.8 to 4.2. Anything below may result in candidiasis or a yeast infection. Anything above may result in bacterial vaginosis or trichomoniasis. What are these? Again, if you were to look clearly, of course, hindi nyo nakikita to, but for you to understand how your vagina actually looks. Here you will see yeast infection. This is your vaginal canal. You will see whitish curd-like discharges that attach to the rugae or those, um, the creases that are available in the vaginal canal. On the other hand, here you may have yellowish, greenish discharge also attached to the rugae and the vaginal walls. Let's go through each one briefly. 
Trichomoniasis is actually a bacterial protozoan infection that results in a pH of 4.2. The discharge is light yellow to greenish, and the discharge is frothy. Some of you may not describe it as frothy, but you will say, um, para hong may bula. Okay. For those who are as, uh, astute and uh, keen with the how their discharges look, this could probably be a trichomoniasis. It also presents with a foul odor. It's smelly. Para siyang malansa and may result in painful urination. And prominent to this, there is irri irritation, inflammation of the vulva. What about bacterial vaginosis? It's caused by a bacteria. Now, because you are being examined by your doctor, you don't know how it looks. This is how it appears. It may look like this, inflamed inside the vagina inflammation. It may be white or gray discharge. It has a fishy or foul odor. It may be non-irritating at times, okay? But you still have that discharge. Now, bacterial vaginosis again, and your um, trichomoniasis, the pH is above 4.2. What about the pH that is below 3.8? You have what we call the candidiasis or yeast infection, fungal infection. Para siyang kesong puti na lumalabas sa vagina. If you will note, it is odorless. There is no smell. It, the smell doesn't, there is, doesn't bother, it, it's not bothersome. What bothers you is the itchiness and the burning sensation that comes with candidiasis. And it may present with a discomfort or a painful urination. So it is important when you seek consult for any of these vaginal discharges, your doctor actually um, takes a gram stain or a sample of the discharge to have it um, tested for culture or for sensitivity to determine actually what kind of bacteria or, fung or any infection to determine the infection and the possible um, treatment for this infection. So this is the circle of life of a woman. There are different stages of life that come to me in my practice and for different concerns. You have young, young kids, not even kids, toddlers, or young children, okay? As a pediatric adolescent gynecologist too, I see these kinds, I, I see these little children who come to me brought not by themselves, but brought by their concerned mothers for not changes because of discharges totally, but they see that there seems to be some changes in the vulva of their uh, young little ones. And as explained to them, again, the changes may be brought about by the absence of estrogen. And for those young mothers who also may have concerns for their little ones who present with vaginal discharges, again, it may not be common to have the bacteria or uh, bacterial infections like trichomoniasis or um, bacterial vaginosis. It could be candidiasis, but it's important that a gram stain and a culture of the discharge that is being presented should be done, okay? Now, there are patients, concerns, patients who come to me because of 
changes, again, discharges, especially after a sexual, especially when they have become sexually active. So these are particularly in the very young adult into the childbearing period. But I would like to emphasize more on the pubertal and the teenage um, age group. These are the young women we need to help. We need to heighten awareness because they have raging hormones and they have to be guided appropriately. We have to understand the changes that occur in their body parts, particularly in their vulva and in their vagina. Okay? So as they continue to go on in the circle of life, and to you women who are in the childbearing um, period, you are to understand the changes that come in the vagina. Also, you are lucky because you have your estrogen still present with you. And for those entering into the climacteric, transitioning into the climacteric period, perimenopause, menopause, and those who are in the postmenopausal and in the geriatric phase, it is also crucial for you to understand the discomforts that occur in your vulva, in your vagina, because there are treatments for this. For the postmenopausal and for geriatric, do not despair. Do not think that youth has abandoned you and that you have to just go through the journey of life feeling uncomfortable, feeling um, that there is no more treatment. No, yeah, there are solutions for any of the concerns that you may experience. So this circle of life, where each one of us has gone through, where your current children, where you are now, where you are approaching, where you are actually uh, existing at this moment, we all have solutions to the personal and intimate concerns that you may experience. But first and foremost, you must understand that the V's are crucial. You have to understand the vulva. You have to understand the vagina, that these structures are vulnerable as we go through the aging process. So to prevent these changes, okay, we cannot prevent aging, but we can certainly prevent, okay, the, the causes of vaginal pH imbalance, let us focus on a good vulva vaginal hygiene care, as I have mentioned. Let us avoid irritating soaps, avoiding spray perfumes, avoid douching, wear cotton panties, keep the area dry and exposed to air. For those menopausic, there are estrogen creams, vaginally inserted tablets, avoid scratching, avoid too much sweating and heat. And for those sexually active, practicing sex, safe sex, using a condom to protect against infection. And it is important to understand that the inappropriate feminine washes can also disrupt your vaginal pH. Here you will see the different available feminine washes. And maybe for your understanding, you should understand, for your understanding, you should know what the pH of these feminine washes are. The normal range is 3.8 to 4.2. You can find your popular feminine washes and see if they actually promote the right pH for the vagina. Further to this, 
Here, you have the following feminine washes and the pH that they provide, okay? And so for us, I need to emphasize two things, good vulvar care and optimum vaginal health are key for our overall wetness, wellness, not wetness. <laughs> Lastly, not all women are the same. We all want to look good. We all want to feel good. Each one of us unique. Our, is each one of us unique and it is best for us to really individualize treatment. Your doctors will individualize your treatment and give you the personal care. That's why it is important today, my advice is to be really well. Focus on your two Vs, vulvar care and vulva vaginal optimal health care because we want to achieve wellness. There is no permanent treatment. You must take in consideration the following, age, our health habits, our socioeconomic habits, our behavior, and our willingness, and willingness to feel better because confidence is equivalent to wellness. So that my dear colleagues, my dear friends, my dear supporters, and those who have come for the first time, thank you. I would want you to please continue to support my wellness group by liking the Ajerera Wellness Group Facebook page, and please subscribe to my YouTube, a Herrera Wellness Group, because I will continue my lectures, my series on overall feminine women's wellness so we may all achieve that well-being of body, mind, and spirit. For those who would like to check on my website, these are my website address, my email address. For those who would like to, to um, question or give any suggestions, you can um, send your um, suggestions to this mobile number. And at this point, I would like to thank all of you for staying tuned to my um, lecture series. And to those who have registered, the first 30 registrants, I am actually giving a complimentary feminine wash called GFresh that has an appropriate pH that was formulated and produced by myself, yours truly, named and called GPro, uh, no, not GPro, but GFresh. And we will be sending this to our 30, the first 30 registrants. Um, who actually registered in this.